Hello YouTube land and welcome to the Get In and Get Out Nintendo podcast episode 25. <laughs> I am one of your hosts, Dantes, and of course joining me like always, Caliones. Uh, how you doing, Caliones? Hey, how you doing, Dantes? Uh, how you doing, everybody? And yeah, this is, uh, we have what, like, you know, uh, Less than a week, and Xenoblade Chronicles 2 will be uh, the last big, great uh, Nintendo uh, Switch game that's going to be coming out. So uh, we're going to be talking about a little about that one. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, plenty of other news, you know, Nintendo related that we will be addressing. So go ahead and done this and take over. So like always, what have you been playing lately? Uh, well, lately, I've actually started tackling uh, two games, uh, but I'm going to concentrate on one, uh, which is Rhyme. Um, I, I got the uh, Bar- uh, Batman, the Telltale series. I got that one as well. And I, I was, you know, I mean, aside from the uh, streaming Wednesday, you know, playing Splatoon 2, I was playing a little bit of uh, Rocket League as well. Uh, so, you know, we'll see how, how that goes. Too many games, so little time. <laughs> uh, in my case, Caliones, of course, uh, I beat World 3 from Mario and Rabbids. Of course, I'm way ahead of you on your game. The most, one of your most anticipated games. I'm almost close to beating it. Just show it to your face a little bit. You know what I'm saying, Nintendo fan. But, uh, but I, I should beat it pretty soon. I, I expect to beat it next week since I'm getting ready to clean my plate for Xenoblade Chronicles. And I want to get my second plat for Hellblade once I do those things. Because I do one game at a time. Remember, Kalyon, it's one game at a time. Once I do all two things... Then I will start Xenoblade. So it's already set the table, ready to roll. But with all that said, let's do a rigmarole, shall we? I want to welcome everybody to the Get In and Get Out Nintendo podcast, episode 25, right here at the Force in Unison Gaming Channel, every Saturday, 9.30 Eastern PM, baby. Please remember to subscribe, like, and comment. So you can make these two crazy MFs happy. Also remember, if you don't want to see our ugly faces, we got a solution for you. Go to SoundCloud and iTunes and download this podcast for free. Rate us over there so you can show us some love. Also, we do have a Facebook page called at Forcing Unison Gaming. And finally, and Dantes says finally, go to ChiguerosNews.com and give some clicks and love to my boy Caliones. With all that said, Caliones. Are you ready? And I repeat it again. Are you ready? For the no one in attendance and the five people washing around the world. Let's get ready for Reggie's new center. My body, ready, Reggie? my body is ready. My body's ready. Take it away, Kalyonis. Hello, YouTube land. This is Dantes. I'm coming in and <laughs> intervening in the middle of the video because we had a technical difficulty where I forgot to uh, remove the music from the trailer that I was showing as we spoke about Fat Mitsu review. And I felt that it wasn't right to leave it that way. So I'm coming in and just talk about the review, basically. Uh, basically, Fat Mitsu gave uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 uh 35 out of 40 so basically they do four reviews and each reviewer gave xenoblade chronicles 2 a 9 a 9 a 9 and an 8 so yeah there's always one asshole <laughs> but anyway uh the biggest uh summary that they can say about the reviewers the reviewers were mostly positive about the game uh they love the large open world they're liking the story they love the story a lot uh they, they like how the characters uh inter- twine between each other they love that the hearts to hearts are back the comeback system was really uh well taken by famitsu saying that it's uh it looks simple at first but it can get really complicated really fast but the biggest concern that they have of the game was uh they criticized the way the game makes you grind for currency and that hurts the overall tempo of the game so again uh, that could be a problem. We'll see the other game. The original games were pretty, 
pretty uh, good with giving you money for what you need, but there still were a lot of expensive stuff. I think that's just normal for Xeno games. If you guys remember Xeno Gears, it was really hard. The money to come by, to buy the good shit was really a problem. Uh, also, I, I wanted to touch base on the Famitsu review. Just gonna compare it to the past Xeno games. Uh, Famitsu gave Xenoblade Chronicles a 9999, which was a 36 out of 40. And then they gave Xenoblade Chronicles X a 9988 for a 34 uh, out of 40. So that shows you that it seems like this guy, this game may not surpass the masterpiece that is uh, Xenoblade Chronicles, uh, the original, but it's way, way better than X. So that's my opinion. Based on what I'm seeing, I'm already more pumped for this game. X was a great game. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, X, it, it, it was, the story was bad. It wasn't that great. I still love the game. I still 100% at the game. But the game wasn't that great in reality, story-wise. I mean, gameplay, it was pretty cool. But X also had a problem with the gameplay where you, you felt alone. You felt that you could do everything with your avatar. You don't need the other characters at all. Where the original Xenoblade was more of a teamwork experience that you have to, uh, you know... Uh, you make sure that, oh, Ryan hits break, uh, excuse me, or you hit break, and Ryan would hit topple. The same with Dunban and other characters like that. So what I mean with that is that you could see that the new Xenoblade has more teamwork, uh, to me, environment than the original. Anyway, I just wanted to talk quickly about the Famitsu review. Uh, it's pump. It's only a week away. I think this game is gonna rock. Uh, I got the special edition and the special controller uh, pre-order. If I get everything in time, I want to do a, a big unboxing where I want to show the whole uh, collection that I have of Xeno games because I have a lot of good stuff for Xeno games. And a lot of Xenoblade fans is going to be surprised at the amount of crap that I have uh, of Xeno games. But anyway, uh, then I, I wanted to move to the next piece of news that, uh, you know, uh, Caliones was speaking for. But you guys couldn't understand him, uh, which was, one second here, uh, that Fanmisu also showed what was the most wanted game in Japan. And if you look like it, Xenoblade is number one. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is number one, followed by Persona Q2, uh, then Dragon Quest XI, and then Shin Megami Tensei at number four and number five, Project Octopath. And that's probably it. It's just because the excitement, the game is around the corner. A lot of people are looking forward to this game, uh, me included. So uh, I'm, I'm really, really pumped to, to see uh, that the excitement, excitement pays off. And, and, you know, and the excitement just shows you uh, that the game is going to sell. Because this game, to me, deserves more, 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 more sales. This game is better than Final Fantasy. I'm telling you right now. I'm, I haven't played this game to say. But at least the series. Xenoblade, as the first two games, are better than Final Fantasy XIII and Final Fantasy XV, which are the two last games that Square has published. I'm just comparing them to the two games that, you know, uh, uh, Square has published against the two games that Monolith has pu published. Anyway... Going back to the third piece of news, and there's, there's where, uh, 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 you know, I'm going to leave it to go into where Caliones was explaining about how the story is developed. So, uh, Nintendo also explained how the story is getting developed for Xenoblade Chronicles. Uh, Nintendo has shared a short passage of Xenoblade Chronicles screenwriter Shujiro Takeda on their website today, which gives a behind-the-scenes insight into the development of the storyline for Xenoblade Chronicles 2. If I were to introduce Xenoblade Chronicles 2 from my perspective as part of a scenario team, I would say that this story has the most director Tetsuya Takahashi flirt today. Takira explains, for the script, director Takahashi provides us with a rich plot right from the start, and Kazuyu Hoyuro and I split the writing in half. I work on the even-numbered chapters while Mr. Hiyoto worked on the odd-numbered chapters. At the same time, director Takahashi was writing the whole story himself. Then, the three of us come together when we had our scripts. We built the script by leveraging our unique personalities and adding the corrections and revisions from director Takahashi. This is very similar to screenplay techniques used in movie. With that said, 
I'm going to go back into uh, going back to the podcast. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy, and I really apologize for the technical error. I worked on the even number chapters while, while Mr. Hyoto worked on the odd number chapters. At the same time, the director Takahashi was writing the whole story himself. Then the three of us all came together when we had our scripts. We built the script by leveraging our unique personalities and adding in corrections and revisions from director Takahashi. This is very similar to the screenplay techniques uh, used for movies. Okay, so I mean, just uh, reading the the passage, what this tells me is uh, that this is you know really good news for the people that love the first game. Uh, the play, you know the first Xenoblade Chronicles uh, was more story based than the second one. The the second one was more. Um, it was like an like an offline MMO ish uh, type game, more you know, mission based, and you know, and going out and the and discovering you know and traveling the world than this one. So um, this is going to be heavily story based, and from, from what they say uh, from the get go. So for those people that like to enjoy a cinematic uh, JRPG, uh, this seems to be one. Yeah, I, I'm really happy to hear that Takahashi is really involved again. I, I always think that this guy is really creative. Uh, uh, P.S. We, I would say yes. One second. I'm answering him right now. Yes. Buy one. <laughs> Here you go. Uh, there you go. Yes. Buy one. Anyway, I told the same thing to my cousin Jose Ilvin yesterday when he called me. If you if he was thinking about buying a Wii U or a Switch, I told him just buy a Switch, dude. Uh, anyway, uh, the the game, uh, I'm happy Takahashi is so involved. I think him being involved uh makes me feel like we we we're getting more hope that this game is going to be really good and he's always involved he always builds the like the he gives he gives like the plot line of the game and then lets his writers start working with him so again he's always being you know supportive of helping and trying to uh, to to build the story the world and this this guy's really creative i mean you're talking about the guy who, that uh he did Sino gears right he has done Seno saga he has done uh, Seno Blade, uh, 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 the RPG that uh, that you said that I didn't know for the GameCube, uh, Barum Tale, whatever it's called. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and yeah, uh, Baden Kados. Baden Kados, thank you. And he did, of course, Seno Blade Chronicles X, which is, again is not a great story, but again, it was expected. It was a more open world type of game, uh, but we'll see. I am really pumped. I'm really happy about this game. Uh, it's one week, one week. The countdown is on. Anybody down there who's like pumped for the game? It's just one week, baby. Just one week. Hold on, hold on. We're 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 close. We're close. We're getting there. And when I get the game, Calionis, I'm gonna probably uh uh put a video uh on Monday. So we always have Mondays TBDs, and we never put anything. But I'm gonna put a video on Monday, and I'm just gonna show my full Xenoblade Chronicles collection or the Seno collection. I want to show my Sino Gears, my my Seno Saga, my all the games across the board, and I bought the special edition and the uh, Switch controller. So if they come, if the Switch controller comes in time, then I will unbox it with everything. But anyway, just show some love, a little bit of pump. We're ready. We're ready to roll. Sino Blade next Friday. Yeah. I, yeah, I, and I, I want. And I wanted there. to say like. Um, <laughs> I mean, he did you know start working as a writer, uh, starting with Xenogears, but uh, before that, he actually I mean, he also worked on games like uh, Final Fantasy IV, Final Fantasy V, uh, Chrono Trigger. So I mean, big big RPG. So I mean, great great talent and great person to have around for an epic JRPG game like those. Yep. Um, Agree. But uh, moving on. Yeah. Here we go. It's done. It's stopped. <laughs> <laughs> so I forgot to mute the trailer as as he went through. So uh, that's my fault. I it's it's been a rough day today. <laughs> I, don't <know. laughs> I don't I don't know. They barely could hear us. Everything, Calionis, just to give you a heads up. Every time the trailer goes on, uh, I don't know if you want to kind of start from scratch or or uh, or continue. Well, uh, I mean, uh, if we can do a summary. Uh, you know, uh, the news that we have been covering so far. Uh, so, you know, the first one that uh, we were talking about uh, was about uh, the Switch and the Famitsu score. Uh, it did receive a 35 out of 40 for an 87.5%. Uh, then uh, Famitsu, uh, they did a survey on their most uh, like, uh, anticipated Nintendo games uh, in Japan, uh, with Xenoblade Chronicles 2 uh, being the number one anticipated game. 
uh, you know, in Japan. Then um, after that, uh, we were, uh, you know, just um, let me go ahead and uh, move it here. And we were talking about the behind the scenes and you know uh, talking about the screenwriters how they came up you know with the story uh how they approached it and how they had it you know broken up in you know like two different people in two different sides uh but yeah you know, three total writers uh were working on it uh, including uh takahashi as the uh, the main writer uh of it all uh also we were uh, telling the people to be careful uh, and avoid spoilers because uh the street date of you know Blade chronicles 2 has been uh, broken, and that was in uh, in the Middle East. Uh, they haven't specified when, but uh, be careful with spoilers, um, with reading articles, with watching videos, uh, because uh, the game is out there uh, somewhere. Um, also, we talked about time, uh, which has listed the Nintendo Switch as uh, the most um, the um, the best gadget of 2017. Uh, Nintendo Switch came in at number one. Uh, the Super NES Classic Edition came in at number six, and the Xbox One X uh, coming in at number eight. Um, and uh, with that, uh, we were moving on to um, the Switch being one of the most popular items during Black Friday um, without it having a discount. So uh, originally, the system came out at $299, uh, and it's still being sold at the same price. So re even though the system, the price hasn't been lowered, it is still selling great. So hopefully uh, this will continue to translate into uh, better and better sales for the system uh, as we close out the year and with Xenoblade Chronicles 2 uh, coming out in less than a week. So uh, the, those were you know, pretty much the, uh, the news uh, that we had been covering. And then we we're going to go ahead and jump into uh, the Japanese sales for the week uh, for, uh, for the Switch, the 3DS, and, and the games themselves. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, this past week, uh, Nintendo sold 86,000 uh, I mean, uh, systems for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, that's a slight increase from, I believe it was like 79,000, almost 80,000 uh, the previous week. So it's still consistently uh, selling up there. Um, and the uh, the Nintendo 3DS sold an additional 43,000. Uh, and you can pretty, you know, pretty much say that the reason why the Nintendo 3DS went up again is because of the release of uh, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, uh, the newest uh, Pokemon entries. Uh, Super Mario Odyssey was number three, uh, selling you know, 62,000 copies. Um, um, and you still have you know the games like uh, Battlefront 2, 4, Call of Duty, uh, 5, Splatoon 2, still selling great with 25,000 additional copies. And it's so far sold a little over 1.3 million copies in Japan alone. Uh, so the game continues to sell great over there. Um, so uh, Nintendo, uh, we'll, we'll see as, you know, as it gets closer to the holiday. But it seems like they're you know, staying steady up there when it comes to the systems. And hopefully uh, we'll continue to make them available uh, in Japan because they continue to sell a lot over there. Uh, I forgot to touch one base on the article before. Uh, I've been reading a lot about how the Xbox, PS4, and Switch are really going duking it out for Black Friday supremacy. Uh, you know, the PlayStation is doing really well. Uh, it already sold out online in a lot of the retailers. I mean, it's two hundred dollars PS4, and I think even have like a like a cashback too for it. Then of course the Xbox uh, had one eighty. 190 price point and of course the switch at 300 so it's gonna be interesting who wins black friday then going into the japan sales another 80,000 plus consoles sold in japan for the switch this thing is gonna oversell the ps4 in my opinion by the end of next year easily uh and then the other piece is uh mario odyssey doing really well i think it's gonna get to the million uh i don't think it will catch platoon but i think it's gonna it's doing pretty well uh, I'm hoping to see big numbers once Xenoblade, because Xenoblade, uh, if he does really well in Japan, I think that can carry over to the to the West, right? So I'm hoping that Xenoblade does really, really well in Japan, being portable, being the first, in theory, big Xeno game portable. I'm hoping that there has big sell numbers uh, for Japan. But anyway, good numbers, so... Yeah, and uh, I, I was taking a quick look over at the Amazon bestseller list. Uh, and currently, the Xbox One S uh, 500 gigabyte unit is uh, is sitting at number two. 
uh, on the list with uh, a, you know PlayStation Plus um, uh, forty dollar card number one. So um, the Xbox One X is, I mean the S, and I'm talking about the S. Uh, it's yeah. number two on the list. Yeah, but uh, Mario, uh, an article yeah. came just today or the day before that the PlayStation was number one, but it sold out. So it's an opportunity now for the S to come yes. up. So uh, so if you sell out, I mean, I think the Switch also, in my opinion, is winning in a sense because I think they had two SKUs. I, this is the article that I read yesterday. You're looking at it today, so I don't know if it has changed. Uh, the, the Switch had two SKUs on the top 10. PlayStation had one, and uh, which was number one yesterday, and then the Xbox was like number six or seven, the S, not the X. The X was like 25 or so. So uh, I think, again, it's, it's a duke out battle, and, you know, when consoles yeah. sell out, the opportunity for the other one to come from behind and get the weekend, right? Because now people I can't find their console, they can then end up buying the other one. So, again, yeah. good numbers for everyone. Yeah, I mean, because I, I, as it stands right now, just uh, pure numbers. Uh, and this is, like you said, it's just today. Uh, Xbox One S, 500 gig, uh, number two. Uh, the Nintendo Switch, uh, the Radar and Blue Joy-Cons, uh, number 16. Then you have the oh, PS4. It went down then from from yesterday because it was that yeah. was like number four or five mm -hmm. yesterday. So, so the Wait, PS4, that means it sold out probably. Yes, probably so. Uh, the PS4 uh, Slim number twenty six, and then you have the 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 uh, Nintendo Switch Gray version at number thirty. So, uh, so it's, it's it's moving along, but like you said, uh, if it sells out, it's not it's not gonna drop out completely. It's just gonna continue to stay steady and, and slowly go down until other items. Uh, take over, but yep. uh, either way, uh, it it's supposed to be uh, a great selling system, regardless of you know, what system it is. Uh, again, well, once again, we broke uh, the record of uh, Black Friday sales. Uh, you know, at least in, in the U.S. So, uh, well, I mean, the, I guess the economy is doing good uh, when it comes to those, or people really love their video games. Um, <laughs> yeah. But um, as far as the uh, the Nintendo. Um, for the rumors, uh, they were talking about a new Nintendo Direct. You already mentioned it on there, uh, you know, previously, and they said that uh, the new Direct that will be coming out is going to be uh, talking about uh, the Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild, the, uh, you know, DLC Pack Two, and that uh, is going to also showcase uh, what 2018 has in store. So, um, if you were to ask me personally, uh, I believe that. Um, you know, probably a couple of days after um, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 releases, we may have a small direct uh, for the DLC pack 2 for Breath of the Wild, but I don't really believe that that direct will be the one uh, to highlight the 2018 games. Uh, maybe uh, they can use it for uh, January, February, if they have any games like that, but I believe the big one uh, will be in January. So what do you believe, Dantes? Uh, I don't know. I just want the direct to happen and tell me what the hell is gonna go for next year. That's that's pure and simple. It's it's I'm I, I'm so happy with the switch for the first year. Uh, I want to see a lot of good games. I know that they're gonna come out with Lost Fear next year, but again, I'm gonna play Lost Fear on the PlayStation Four. Uh, then you have you know Octopack Traveler. That's an exclusive. I, I'm I'm gonna be buying that. Uh, then, of course, I'm hoping that we get a Pikmin. I think we need a Pikmin for sure next year. There's a minor hope that we get Metro Prime. It's not going to happen. Again, they just showed the JPEG, so it's not going to happen anytime soon. And then the... Uh, uh, I just don't know. I I don't know if there's like a Smash Deluxe Edition coming out to hold over until the new Smash. I mean, Nintendo needs to fill that up. And again, they're going to have good third-party support. So uh, we'll see what happens. I, I just... I'm just concerned that basically they uh they use all their all their big guns for this year and we have to cover for next year too. But we'll see because again, Kirby is not a, a huge system seller. Joshi is not a huge system seller. So Pokemon could be the one. If Pokemon does come next year, that could be the one that everybody's gonna go, oh my god, and everybody's gonna buy the console for. But you only you you have uh, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon just came out this year. So I honestly believe. That Pokemon, if it comes out, is gonna be 2019, not next year. But we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um. I mean, I believe that if they were somehow able to deliver, uh, you know, I'm saying in hypothetical, uh, Pokemon at the end of the year, uh, Animal Crossing, uh, like sometime throughout the year. I'm not really expecting Metroid uh, to make it this year because, like you said, we only had 
uh, the logo, uh, you know, what amounts to be the logo. Uh, so it was like a teaser of, you know, of an announcement. So I'm not really expecting any of that. But um, Yoshi, uh, Kirby, like you said, they're not necessarily system sellers. Uh, they are, I mean, I believe, or I think of it more as padding for, um, you know, for fans that already have the system. So if you need, like those games, you probably already own a, a Nintendo Switch anyway. So, uh, but if somehow they deliver Pokemon and Animal Crossing, because Animal Crossing is another one that sells a lot of systems, and because of the smartphone application, uh, it could be, again, a build up over to, uh, to the game coming out on the Switch. So uh, that's another one to look forward to. Hey, shout out, Dick. Uh, the god of Splatoon has joined us today in the chat. And today he's gracing the peeps with Splatoon 1. So if you're going to want to go down there and play with you with him, uh, contact Dick in the chat. But thank you for joining us, Dick. Go ahead, Carlos, with the next one. Yeah, I'm going to say uh, I cannot play Splatoon 1 with anybody because the battery on my Wii U gamepad died. Uh, so I cannot. I got to replace it first before I can go back over to the Wii U. Uh, but uh, moving along. Um, well, we had GameStop. Uh, they were, you know, talking about their uh, third quarter sales, and they reported that uh, their sales they ha they actually had an increase, and it was due, in fact, to or for the most part, uh, thanks to the Nintendo Switch. So uh, they stated that they, that our third quarter sales results were driven by strong software demand and continued momentum for Nintendo Switch and collectibles. Uh, so they had an increase of 8.8 percent .8 from 284.4 million to 309 million. Uh, and the collectibles increased from 25, uh, 26.5%, um, basically uh, from 109.4 million to 138.4. So uh, aside from you know them talking about the sales, I'm pretty sure like uh, some of the increase or profit uh, came down to uh, GameStop closing some of the stores and consolidating. So now instead of you having multiple stores and having to spend money uh, on merchandise and things like that for them, since they're consolidating, uh, then that's uh, less money that you need to spend on those you know, locations. So uh, that's something that I'm pretty sure uh, you know, came into effect on this one. But uh, I mean, for there's some of those out there that do not like GameStop or they you know, hate its guts completely. But either way, uh, I mean, it's a retailer for video games and you, know, you need to have you know, one of those uh, you know, like trickled in uh, around so best thought. buys gamers club people best buy gamers club is what you need to be using come on guys <laughs> 30 dollars for two years and you get 20 percent off on every new game i haven't paid 60 dollars the whole year i'm telling you i bought persona 5 all my switch games on best buy i stopped uh buying on GameStop. When the whole circle of life uh, BS came out, and I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not buying anymore here. Maybe consoles here and there, maybe once in a while, but anyway, use Best Buy. But aside from that, Switch is a hit. <laughs> Gangsta is probably thanking God that the Switch is around right now. Uh, and best and Black Friday has been a huge hit for them. They came out again with the news and said, yeah, uh, you know, we did well. We did great on, on Black Friday, but you know, also, uh, again, I want to throw a little bit of dirt to them, but a couple of years ago, they said, we will never open Black Friday because we don't want to put our associates through that. They, I, want us, they, I want them to spend time with their family. And then this year, they said, we are going to open on Black Friday because our associates wanted us to open on Black Friday. So again, corporate BS, but they did a good, a, a good Black Friday or... We should start calling it Black Thursday, honestly, because everybody's opening on Thursday. This is the biggest BS. If you got to go <laughs> and shit on your Thanksgiving dinner just to go to a, to a store to get the latest or, you know, save a couple of bucks, I mean, it's, it's, it's good for you. I wouldn't do it. I mean, Thursdays to me, you're eating with your family. You should enjoy it. You shouldn't go to the uh, damn store. But anyway, keep going, Calionis. Yeah, so uh, yeah, we had another uh, uh, news on here, basically talking about the sales for the system, uh, and this is coming from Canada. So currently, you know, the Canada basically reported that Nintendo Switch uh, remains the best-selling console um, in their territory. That was this was after the release of the NPDs and and the U.S. numbers as well. Uh, so the Nintendo Switch was the most sold video game system in October, um, and Nintendo 
systems, discounts, the Nintendo Switch, the 3DS, and the Super NES Classic Edition, they, they accounted for 62% of all video game hardware sold as well. Uh, the Super Mario Odyssey was the top selling video game of the month. Odyssey. And Odyssey. yep. And they said here that one of every four dollars spent on video games and software in October was spent on a Nintendo title. Uh, so basically one out of every four uh, was a Nintendo game sold. So it is selling like crazy. I'm loving it that people are not only buying Nintendo games, but making they're buying it rain. They're making yep. it rain. They're buying third-party games. They're buying buying indie games. So they're supporting the console like they should. Uh, so I wanted to say uh, quickly, uh, Sean. Yeah, you know, thank you for dropping by, and yeah, you know, and yeah, you know, have a great one. Uh, hello, Margie, and hello, Spoon. Uh, welcome to the chat. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say quickly. Uh... <sighs> I had one of my friends who texted me and said that he bought Doom. This guy, again, a non-gamer who bought the Switch, he texted me today and said he bought Doom. That's all you need to know. Anyway, keep going, Carlos. Okay, boom. And uh, we have another news coming from Square Enix, uh, and they're saying that uh, they are still interested on bringing Final Fantasy XIV over to Nintendo Switch. Um, end, end quote, uh, we have no intentions to divide the servers per platform. We're working with one big community. I'm interested in other platforms, of course. I hope those first parties change their policies or mindsets. I'm an MMORPG gamer. I love to play with many people globally. And we've been talking to those platforms about getting it on their hardware. Positive discussion is ongoing. It's not as if we're not doing anything. We are actually talking to them and the platform uh, holders showing their attitude in a more positive way. So, um, you know, they're saying that uh, there is com you know, conversations in between uh, well, the uh, you know, Sony and PC, which are the ones that are you know, playing together when it comes to Final Fantasy XIV, but uh, to somehow be able to add Xbox One and Nintendo Switch players uh, among those as well. So... Uh, hopefully something's going to work out. We already know that uh, Nintendo has no problem working directly with Microsoft when it comes to games like Minecraft or Rocket League, where they can all play together. Uh, so hopefully they can find some sort of way to be able to join uh, the PS4 and PC players, at least when it comes to uh, Final Fantasy XIV. But Dantes, do you see this happening? <laughs> no cross gaming for sure. No cross-platform gaming, but but can Final Fantasy XIV come to the Switch? I can see it happen. At least have some cross-play with PC. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Final Fantasy would be great on the Switch. Have the first MMO. Nintendo has been doing a good job finding a game for each genre. You know, they have MOBAs. They have shooters. Uh, I don't think they have car racers. I mean, real sims, not you know, fun like Rocket League or Mario Kart, but not Kart Racer, like, you know, Gran Turismo and stuff like that. But they're feeling the, they're, they're stuck in. They're trying to give everybody something for the system. So if you buy it, you will like something. That's that's always been Sony's strategy for many years. It's worked out fine with them. So Nintendo should be doing the same thing, trying to get as many genres in your console as possible. Go ahead, Caliones. I think you're you're uh, typing. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was you know, just talking to uh, Spoon is talking about how he hit uh, level 51 on Splatoon 2. Uh, that would not have been you able. Guys are I mean, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I I know you don't really you know, necessarily like the game, but you know we love playing it, uh, and we do it every I mean every Wednesday. Every Wednesday, 9:30 9 p.m. Eastern time. Every go ahead. <laughs> so, but uh, continue with the news. Uh, we had uh, Valkyrie Chronicles for has been announced for the Nintendo Switch. Um, I had played the original game on the PS2. I love the game, and I'm glad that it's finding, you know, the, the fourth entry is finding the way uh, to the Switch. But hopefully, somehow, uh, they can get the other three games, uh, the first two that came out on the PS2 and the third one uh, that came out on the PSP, uh, that they can find a way to bring in, you know, kind of like collect them and put them together. And so you can experience the, uh, the storyline from those games before you jump on number four. Uh, so that's what I hope for. But uh, the game is also coming out on uh, you know, PS4, and it's coming out on Xbox One. But outside of Japan, uh, it won't come out on the Xbox One in Japan. So um, if you have an Xbox One, um, well, I don't know why you will have an Xbox One in Japan. But if you have <laughs> one, you won't be able to play that one. But hey, uh, 
what do you think about the game? Uh, great. Uh, we talked about this in Forcing Unison Live. Uh, I was, I, I'm really intrigued. Now we're starting to see those games coming first day, the same day with the Xbox and PlayStation. Now I want to see how the Switch does. The power of the Switch. Not power as in console power, but the power as in the brand power. So we'll see what happens. Uh, interesting, no PC. PC was one of the biggest reasons why this game got revived. So when they put it on PC, it sold really well, Calionis. So I am surprised there's no PC port, but but I will say that it's going to be one pretty soon. If they did it on the Xbox, they're probably going to be able to transfer it to PC really fast. But I'm more surprised. I would have uh, I would have put the PC port in a priority first than the Xbox version, but that's just me. Okay, and uh, with the last piece of news that we have for the day, um, <laughs> uh, Dantes, can you grace us and tell us the title of the new game coming out for the Nintendo Switch? What was it? Uh, <laughs> you, you can't pronounce it. I know you can't curse. You got something wrong with you that you can't curse. You know, I read an interesting news article that says the smart people curse a lot. So I'm just saying, if you want to be really smart, you need to start cursing. Hey, if you want to be Mario and Rabbits, you need to start cursing. I'm just saying. That's a, that's a smart game for smart people like me. But but <laughs> I think it's uh, Lick My Ass, right? <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, so Lick My Ass is coming for the Switch. When is it coming, Calionis? Uh, it's going to be coming out uh, well, it's, uh, sometime in, uh, in 2018. Uh, they haven't specified when, but uh, around March. Uh, March something. <laughs> so remember guys march something is gonna be lick my ass day so remember if you guys want to have a lot of good time go play lick my ass and to clarify it's a real game i'm not joking that is a real game coming to the switch so before you guys shut us down in youtube it's a real game google it please <laughs> go ahead calionis with the next one yeah and yeah, just uh, I want to say it is um, a military-themed card-based uh, game. Uh, so yeah, that's the uh, the direct translation. So I'm pretty sure once they translate it over to English, it's probably not going to be called that anymore. It's going to change somewhat. Uh, so, but yeah, that'll be interesting to see what they change it over to. Uh, but Dantes, that's it. We're done with the news, and we can move on from here. Okay. Galeones, that was small, a small news day. So that's why we're a little bit struggling because really it wasn't, it wasn't a great week. It, it was, it was, uh, there wasn't a lot of video game news. A lot of people were just talking about, you know, you know, a lot of people were talking about Black Friday. That was the news basically all over. So it was a small news today for Regis News Center, but it's time to move on. So Galeones, if I wanted to know what are the best Switch games, which store should I go to? Well, and the store is going to be uh, Shigeru's Mini Mart, uh, which uh, I can, I'll say it, it's, it's, it's really becoming a supermarket. I know that you said that it, it's all depending on how Xenoblade Chronicles 2 does, but we'll see. So, so what store, I mean, what store, what score does Xenoblade Chronicles 2 needs to have in order for you to change over from Mini Market to Supermarket? 90. So if it gets a 90 Metacritic score, you will start calling it the supermarket? Sure. Okay, so everybody, Dantes is on record saying that if Xenoblade Chronicles 2 scores a 90 or higher Metacritic score, it will officially be baptized as the Shigeru's supermarket. Uh, I'm okay with that. We'll see what happens. It's still, it's still a mini market in my eyes compared to the other consoles, but that's it's all good. If Caleones want to name it a supermarket... If, if, if Xenoblade gets a 90, I'll name it a supermarket. Okay, so uh, we have the list of games. Um, and, you know, some of them um, are, I mean, like, uh, I'll say like a re-release, but not necessarily a re-release. So uh, we have the uh, the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Explorers Edition, uh, which is the game. It comes with the um, the Explorers you know, um, map as well uh, and the art book. So that's, um, you know, for people that do not have the game, uh, that's a you know, pretty good game uh, or pretty good a collection to get uh dantes you might be wanting to you know like sell your game and and get that one so you can have the uh the extra since uh looking at your background you pretty much like you know to get the collectibles so, so um, uh, i already bought the dlc so it's it's on my switch i haven't played it yet 
So I'm not going to buy it physically at this point. I wasn't planning to, you know, to spend up the money. You know what I was looking for, though, uh, Calionis? Uh, because I have a, a lot, I have like over $35 in discounts in Best Buy. So I was I'm like, I want to use them. Uh, and I was going to buy Rayman Legends for the Switch because I never bought that game, right? So I wanted to buy it and, you know, play it on the Switch on the go. I got another good game that you can play here and there little by little. And it was sold out, dude. It was completely sold out for Black Friday because they had a sale for $20 on Black Friday for that game. So uh, Ubisoft needs to be happy right now, honestly. So I, I couldn't buy Rayman Legends. That's an old game, Carionis, and I couldn't buy Rayman Legends. That's freaking crazy. <laughs> anyway, keep going. Okay, so um, and just uh, going through the list of different games. Um, so we have uh, uh, Crimson Land. Uh, we have uh, Kit Trip, uh, Letter Quest Remastered, uh, Mantis Burn Racing, uh, Stick It to the Man, Strand, uh, Transcripted, Worms, uh, Weapons of Mass Destruction, uh, Neo Geo Soccer Brawl, Dead Synchron City, Tomorrow Comes Today, Gear Club Unlimited, MXGP3, the official motocross video game, uh, Super Beat Zonic, Unbox Newbies Adventure, and I don't know how to pronounce this one is uh, Ernag Unlimited, uh, your or your Unlimited, um, and yeah, that's uh, you know pretty much the other uh, games uh, coming out this week. So I mean, there's a pretty good amount of games, uh, but as far as you know the games themselves, it's not like last week. Last week is the one that we had big uh, AAA releases like you know the Batman Arkham. Uh, about Batman Telltale's uh, series, we had Rhyme, L.A. Noir, uh, Rocket League, uh, Lego Marvel uh, superheroes. So uh, we we had. Thank you, thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it. I'll find it. Don't worry. I'll find it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Keep going. Uh, but yeah. Um, so do you have a, a favorite game coming out this week, or are you still concentrating on the other ones? Uh, so I played a couple. I played uh, Stick It to the Man. That's a really good creative game. I do recommend it to play it. Uh, and uh, and if they keep putting games like that, I'll just keep adding to my catalog of Switch games I've already beaten. So I'm, a, I'm like me and Calionis right now, I'm like 40 games beat it on the Nintendo console, and Calionis like five. So I want to keep padding my list. So uh, I want to see if they keep releasing games that were on the PlayStation, so I keep adding them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I beat uh, Stick It to the Man, and I beat uh synchronous uh, whatever it was the title i can't remember i have the plot for it but anyway uh i stick it to the man would be my game of the week i had a good time when i played on the playstation it's really creative really creative puzzles so if you enjoy that type of game uh and it's a funny game too so it's really really creative so if you enjoy that type of weird quirky game i do recommend stick it to the man okay and we're done with the games so, so, we, so we can move on. So we we don't have uh, Numa's Nintendo discussion because the week was weak. I'm telling you, it was weak. So I think we're going to end the show today because it, it's been a rough day. It's been a rough, rough day. We'll, we'll survive. We'll be fine. Uh, but with that said, though, I want to thank you, everybody, who's in the chat. The mods, like always, Dick, Sean for showing up, PSVX, Boxy showing up, of course, showing some love. Uh, wow, we, we got to 17 watching right now when I'm about to end the show. I apologize, guys. If you guys want to go back and see some Xenoblade Chronicles uh, gameplay, just, you know. So all the 17 people who are watching right now, we thank you for, for the support. Uh, with that said, I want to thank everybody for coming down to the Get In and Get Out Nintendo Podcast episode 25 right here at the Forcing Unison Gaming Channel. Every Saturday, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Please remember to subscribe, like, and comment so you can make these two crazy MFs happy. Also remember, if you don't want to see ugly faces, shh, come over here. I got a solution for you. Go to SoundCloud and iTunes and download this podcast for free. Rate us over there so you can show up some love. Also, we do have a Facebook page called at Forcing Unison Gaming. Also, Go to the description box below and you can see the full channel schedule. Like Forcing Unison Live every Tuesday, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Like Streaming Wednesdays where Caliones plays with the peeps. And he's consistently playing Splatoon 2. So if you like Splatoon 2, come down on Wednesdays. 
and finally, Nantes says finally, go to ChigueroSnews.com and get some clicks and love to my boy Caliones. With all that said, thank you again. See you guys. Have a great one, everyone. Oh, before that, since I forgot to put the outro music, let's hit it. There we go. Some Cineblade music since it's a Cineblade day. And I, again, I, it's just been an awful day. I forgot even to put the music. And the outro pick, let's show it. There it is. Thank you for watching and subscribe. <laughs> See you guys. Bye.